Good morning, folks. Now, that's a way to start the news. 10 points to the Electric Frontier Foundation. I've also linked this short video for you below. We had a mid-sized quake hit Tanzania yesterday, 4.2 off the U.S. West Coast. North Pole rocking again with moderate tremors closer to Iceland. Had a solid aftershock at the same location as the Canadian 7.7. .7. South American subduction zone has increased quake frequency since yesterday's interplate quake. A mudslide in British Columbia has caused evacuations and minor damage and the Prairie Island nuke plant declared an unusual event after safety control failures, but of course, they say there's no danger. Briefly mentioning this Hawaiian buoy, we're pretty sure it's not correct from surfer info networks, which are actually pretty well established. And if this was the sea floor, it's rapid enough to produce signatures on helioplots and probably tsunamis, so I'd say it's data error. Still got these same two tropical systems on opposite ends of the earth. Four days later, we still don't know where Rosa is going. The Indian Ocean cyclone season begins today as their third major storm already moves on to the Indian mainland. Big cyclonic low over Western Europe. You can see the cloud patterns here and also where you can expect precipitation tonight and tomorrow. Parts of Western Australia got two months of rain in one day. I'd love eyewitness reports from you folks down under. New Zealand, hope you still got your jackets out. Colder temperatures coming from Melbourne to you this weekend. This is from yesterday. You remember the solar wind temperature and speed began rising and strumming the earth just right to produce this multi-frequency induction. Well, you might remember also that I said a CME was on the way. Having a look at the magnetosphere sim, first you see red connections on the dark side of earth, bunching of the field lines and a release away to the back just before impact. On the left you see the solar wind jump in the yellow and the orange. It's a speed and the density. Luckily we've had almost no ionospheric absorption. The induced currents are dying down around 400 UTC, but the geomagnetic instability begins around 400 UTC. If the initial impact takes the BZ north, as it did here, a cutoff of the CME will sometimes send us unstable. You see the orange, that's the density drop at 400 UTC, taking us from geoelectric induction to geomagnetic instability. I do not know if we will hit storm status today. As of this morning, coronal holes are facing Earth from the North Pole down past the equator. This is half our quake watch. We also have some thin dark plasma filaments posing eruption threat on the south. If you will recall, the Sun, Mercury, and Neptune all line up today. And geez, that's hard to see, but the Earth is set to pass between Venus and Uranus. Just wait till you see what mid-November brings. Could be a November to remember. DC Symbols put out a good video on that yesterday. Eyes open. No fear, it's about 6.08 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.